very young age. I wanted to collect DVDs, VHS tapes, posters. I saw a Scarface poster in a charity shop once and I thought it was a cartoon. So I became obsessed with Al Pacino playing Tony Montana and Scarface. And that was a very early influence. And I remember learning about, which I didn't understand at the time, the rise and fall of someone. And the effects of an ego. And a lot of these lessons came to me prematurely compared to when I discovered them in real life as I grew up. For example, watching Cosa Nostra films and gangster films and me being in primary school and forming my own little mafias where it was all about who sold sweets and who sold cigarettes. And it ended up with me alone versus the whole rest of the year. The rise and the downfall of a 13 year old kid. 16, I left school. 20 years old, I made my first short film. It was the biggest hustle I was involved with since I used to sell cigarettes and sweets in school. Then we got to 22 and I made my second film, which was a lower budget and it was a skeleton crew made with me and my friend Ryan Kevin Doyle. And that was a two day shoot and it was after my 22nd birthday. During these times, you could see the mind state I'm in as a young adult with angst. At 22, on the day after Christmas, in a very peculiar and cinematic way, I collapsed and I was out for seven minutes and it was damn scary. I then got rushed to hospital and stayed in a ward for a few weeks and on New Year's Eve, I remember looking out the window and seeing fireworks to the right of me and to the left of me, there was about 85 year old man decaying, slowly dying, fucking weird stuff right there. And to me, my base and my dependency on fiction allowed me to look at it with the tiniest bit of optimism which one can get in a situation like that. I then found out I had a brain tumor. And during this process, my neurologist kept on saying there's a lot about to do with your perception of this and how you face the and how you face the world and how you handle it. And what I kept on saying to myself, in a sense that this was a fictional story, I kept on saying the script shall not end here. This story is too damn interesting to end right now. So before I went into the surgery, I wore my Scarface hoodie, took that off, wore this weird robe thing, and then I went to all the nurses and the doctors and I said, I want to become a film director. And I said, this story, my story cannot end here. I said to them, and this is going to sound corny, and this is going to sound, you know, annoying for you arseholes out there. I looked around and I said, this is all in the name of art. And they all giggled, and you know, my mother was there on the verge of tears. And when I woke up after the surgery, I couldn't see out of one eye. I was bleeding out my ears, and all I could see around my body was stickers saying, ah, 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 ah. And that was all in the name of trusting that life was sort of in a sense like fiction and stories can sometimes add up about some of my influences Pedro Almodova, Roy Anderson, Francois Truffaut, Eric Romer, Martin Scorsese, Lars von Trier sometimes, Stanley Kubrick and the reason I say that is not because of his films I love Eyes Wide Shut, love Barry Lyndon it's all about the context with Stanley see Stanley lived in St Albans outside of London and he had a wife, kids, pets, a country house, I would suppose a cinema room, a writing room, and the way he met his wife was on the set of Pass of Glory. To me, in a sense, this could be a beautiful fictional tale. Again, for the assholes, this will make you shiver, but I can poignantly, and I wouldn't say proudly say that at the moment, my life is based around films and dependent on the art of filmmaking. And one day, similar to those romantic films I watch and the love stories, I could find another reason and be like Stanley Kubrick in the house with his wife, the kids, the pets, and of course the damn cinema. The, not the end.